Hello and welcome to the very first Sherazade Foundation Auction. Great to have you with us. For our first lot, lot number one, we have a story called Only the Canvas Knows the Name. And with it comes the most astonishing and intriguing painting I can remember ever seeing. To make it more wonderful, both the painting and the story are created by the celebrated American architect and writer and polymath, Ken Tate. We're astonishingly grateful to him for his creativity and we're very, very proud to feature this as the first object in our auction. Only the Painting Knows the Whole Story by Ken and Duke Tate. The drop cloth was first aware of her existence, her essence, in a dark room with many people. Sunlight entered through the openings and the drop cloth became ever more conscious of herself as the men and women handled her. A child with a sweet aura and a happy smile whose father owned the drop cloth factory selected her from a staggering pile of other cloths. She was proud to be selected and felt the warmth of the sun through the skylight when she was unfolded and laid out on an old hand-carved wooden table. She heard voices and was comforted by the vibration of the place and the people therein. The drop cloth was then sewn into another cloth like herself. Merging with the other cloth, the two became one. The drop cloth liked her new size. She had more surface awareness, and she now realized that she was made of a heavy fabric. She liked the way she felt to herself. She wanted to be of use somehow and wondered why she had been created in the first place. The drop cloth was then handled by more humans as they carefully and with great skill stitched her edges. The sewing made her feel defined and limited. Suddenly her thoughts and feelings became more concentrated and focused. Before the edges had been stitched, she had felt free. Now she had a purpose, but she didn't quite know what that was. She would have to wait to find out. Sometimes when she was still, she had the awareness of being a fluffy white cotton ball on a green stem in a field of other white balls basking in the sunlight. Yes, those were the days. Things were simpler then, but she seen, sensed a new journey lay ahead of her where she would aspire to be something more. The drop cloth felt alive again, as if awakened from a deep sleep when she was taken from her shelf and placed in a bag. Seeing through the bag, she felt herself being carried and then placed with other drop cloths onto rolling carts and then into big vans. Then it was pitch black again. The drop cloth felt the vibrations of the movement of the van and found pleasure in them. The spirit of adventure filled the drop cloth with joy, and she wondered if maybe one day she would wrap and comfort something wherever she was going. Perhaps the people that had cared for her thus far. Although she didn't yet know it, she sensed she had been created for some magical purpose. The drop cloth became fond of her existence traveling in the van. When the vehicle finally stopped moving, many people appeared and started touching and moving her and the other cloths. The drop cloth was taken into a room with strong light. There were people in the room moving objects around from one cold, hard shelf to another. They were vibrating, but not as strongly as the ones before. Then one day, the drop cloth was taken from her cold spot on the shelf to another room. This room felt expansive, and people there were excited and playful. It was warmer, too. The drop cloth was proudly placed for all the store's customers to see, touch, and handle. It felt so good to be around people again, 
and in her heart she now loved them and somehow wanted to be of service to them. Shortly after being placed on the shelf, the drop cloth was enthusiastically grabbed by an eccentric, curious little Italian man with Groucho Marx whiskers and a big nose with long, gnarly gray hairs. He wore a plaid newsboy hat and paint-splattered white canvas overalls. Seeing the outfit, the drop cloth thought, He has a canvas body just like me, and giggled. The man took her and placed her in a cart with other objects from the bright room and carried them to a register where he paid for her and the other things. Money was being exchanged and the drop cloth watched, pleased and curious. After being bought by the interesting man, the drop cloth had a little more self-awareness. When the Groucho man took her into his studio, she sensed this was her special place, a place she could possibly serve people. However, when the man dropped her on the cold, hard floor, she began to worry. First of all, she got stepped on right away. It didn't hurt, but life was hard on the stone floor. Nevertheless, the drop cloth became accustomed to her life under the Italian's feet. Through hearing conversations, she learned the painter's name was Tino and that their home was in California. He had a good vibe and radiated that onto her surface. One day, the drop cloth was moved into an important position where the man spent most of his time. She was still on the floor, but better somehow. She started to feel some kind of wetness hit her surface. She had grown to know that this wetness had something important to do with the art Tino was always creating on the easel. Although she was on the floor, the drop cloth had begun to like being there because she was performing a higher function than she had previously. At times, she thought, this was the reason she had been created to serve, while at other times she longed to be a painting on Tino's easel. As time passed, the drop cloth developed a deep thirst to be on the artist's easel, like those other canvases, where she could be transformed by the artist into something greater. Any day, she thought. Over many months, while the drop cloth kept wishing to be a painting, the wet patterns on her surface started to make pictures, like the ones on the easel. Not exactly the same. They were different, but better in an interesting way. The drop cloth was aware of these patterns and could sense them like continents on a map of the world. Her surface started to know things and to understand the meaning in the various shapes. This awareness gave the drop cloth feelings of sublime joy. Her surface started to tingle, and she could feel the fibers of woven cotton rise and vibrate ever so slightly, but still they were rising as though stirred by the wind that once blew them in the field. She knew that she had now finally discovered her purpose to be a work of art, the drop cloth wanted to be a real piece of art so strongly that she gave it all her energy to this one singular intention. She willed the painter to notice one day how beautiful her art had already become, but he never seemed to look down. The drop cloth continued her way with the paint to receive and hold the drops that fell upon her surface, doing her best always to be a painting. And one day, the impossible happened quite accidentally. Tino dropped his brush onto the drop cloth, and when he reached down to get it, his muddy eyes widened and a smile emerged from behind his groucho mustache. Like a crazed madman, he moved everything hurriedly off the cloth, and lifting her up, attached her to the far wall so he could get a better look at her. There, Tino stood back, combed his mustache, and kissed his fingertips, hollering, Che bello! After that, he stood there like a Roman statue for hours, 
just peering into the mystery that had unfolded before his sleepy eyes. Then when he had taken in all of her beauty, he put the drop cloth back on the floor. Oh no, thought the drop cloth. Tino's not going to put me on the easel where I belong. But lo and behold, Tino proceeded to get on his knees next to the drop cloth and speak to her gently as if in a whisper while caressing her surface with his paint-caked fingers. You are now one of my paintings. I don't know how this happened, but you have become one of my brightest creations. Perhaps it's because I didn't have to do anything. It just happened. All we did was to allow. And then Tino went over to his workbench and carried his cradle of paints and brushes back to her. He made some intentional strokes here and there on her beautiful surface to even her out. And in this way, the artist and his creation became one. When Tino finished, the drop cloth was even more sublime, returning to a state of joy at arriving at her destination. For the first time in her life, she was at peace. As the days moved on, the drop cloth began to be admired by Tino's friends in the studio. He showed her to absolutely everyone in their little town. And through the paint on her surface, the color and shapes, she told her story to them like the Arabian story of the camel that was turned into a storyteller and asked to tell his story to the world. In contrast to the camel, the drop cloth's vehicle was paint and cotton, rather than air and words, but the artist's friends understood the meaning just as clearly. The painting stayed with people, for it was glorious, and they would think about its meaning and its humble beginnings from time to time. But even now, with all the admiration she enjoyed, the drop cloth was uneasy just hanging on the lonely wall. She needed something more to do, some greater purpose, First of all, she must be stretched onto a canvas like the other painting she had seen, which then left the studio and went away. Where would she go next? As days turned to months and months to years, she forgot about her longing and challenged herself to become content enough. It was true, she had a pretty good life with Tito and his friends there in the studio. They listened to music like Muddy Waters and Bob Dylan, and for a time she was able to forget her dream. But one day, Tino stopped coming to the studio, and the drop cloth fell into a deep depression. There was no sign of him for weeks. Then one night, rain fell from the sky so hard that the water rose in the streets around the studio by half a foot. Lightning flashed from the rolling black clouds and thunder banged outside the studio's windows. The light was off in her room, and all the cloth could hear was the roof rattling booms in the distance. Now, all alone, the drop cloth thought to herself, is this all there is? I am a work of art, but I am still not happy. With tears in her eyes, she dozed off. In her sleep, she dreamed of children playing in the sun in the beautiful lush valleys of an imaginary kingdom blessed with never-ending peace. And she, the drop cloth, was somehow connected to it in a small but important way. She didn't quite know how or why, but it felt so good to be a thread in that rope, and she was warm again. The light flipped on in the studio, waking her. Tino came in. She observed that the rain had stopped outside as he walked over to her and took her gently off the wall. She was happy when she saw him, for in her heart she had missed him deeply. As he folded her up, she wondered where they might be going. Tino carried her into the kitchen of the main house where his wife Maria was chopping onions. He explained that the wonderful painting had just been sold to the highest bidder 
at a charitable auction for children in great need and would be traveling soon by mail to its new owner. Hearing this, the painting knew her time had come to serve again, but this time in a greater way than before. She felt happy and at ease. She felt complete. The next day, Tino placed her in a package at the post office where she learned she now had a name. Only the painting knows the whole story. She loved it, for she was her story, and she was looking forward to sharing her journey from cotton ball to lowly drop cloth to painting to helping the world with everyone. While traveling, she thought, everything has a myth and a purpose. Telling your story to the world, whether you are an iguana or a get lost in Idaho cup or even a painting like I am, will be one of the most important things you do in your life. 